so when I initially submitted my resignation to leave uh, Shell, mm -hmm. in my mind I had a few ideas that I wanted to pursue. Right. One was to become a social entrepreneur. Right. And, um, and I wrote a manifesto around what I wanted it to be. And the initial idea was called uh, Reaction. Mm -hmm. Actually, the initial idea was bigger than what it is now because I had to really focus it. But my initial idea was really around um, helping other social enterprises in Brunei thrive. Right? How do I make social businesses mainstream in Brunei mm -hmm. such that we can scale their impact? Right. I feel like if we go about it on our own, then yes, we make an impact, but it might be very siloed and not as impactful as if we all collaborated at a cohesive level. That was my one, or my one idea. My second idea, which is now no longer part of the main idea, but I'll mention it to you because it's still very much in line with continuous learning. I wanted to create a forum where retired folks mm -hmm. could still come together and stay relevant themselves. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be able to bring the community together through my dad, who's retired. and and show them Coursera, show them these online courses that they can sign up on. Because I feel that in Brunei, once you retire, you just go into uh, hibernation mode or you end up looking after your grandkids or you're on a golf course. I feel like to keep your, your brains going, it's good to always stay and keep, well, keep learning, right? Mm -hmm. It helps with the memory. And so my angle is how do I um, delay dementia in the older generation. So I wanted to get them excited and I also feel like in Wawasan 2035 a lot of it is very focused on the youth mm -hmm. and I wanted the retired folks to also be able to see themselves in the 2035 vision and because I feel if I take my dad as an example, he has so much to give right. um, but where is that forum where I can connect the retired folks mm -hmm. with the younger generation who are now getting a lot of opportunities you know lots of you know dare pr provides a lot of training but what about the retired folks they have wealth of experience yes wisdom wisdom and i am sure they want to be able to share that with the younger generation but i felt that that platform to link the two was missing that was the idea so two very distinct ideas, but I lumped it into a single social enterprise. So when I heard about Startup Weekend Brunei, women's edition, I had initially had something else planned that weekend. I was going to go and be a Reiki practitioner, by the way, mm -hmm. Japanese healing. I wanted to be a practitioner in that, but that got cancelled. And I'm a big believer in the universe and when things happen, it's for a reason. Right. So when that got cancelled, Startup weekend, someone WhatsApp me a picture, my brother-in-law sent me a picture of it, and I said, oh, I'll, I'll go. Mm -hmm. So I went, and I pitched my idea, 60 seconds pitch, what is the reaction all about? I pitched it, um, it was the top idea, mm -hmm. and that was the idea that got worked on over the next 54 hours, mm -hmm. that's the whole format of Startup Weekend. Wow. In 54 hours, turn your idea into, some, into a business plan. So the idea that it is now and what we're pursuing is it's an online marketplace, essentially, that is very much um, the whole intent is to allow consumers to buy with a purpose. Mm -hmm. So what it means is we will have a website like Etsy, like Amazon, mm -hmm. but conscious products and services. Mm -hmm. So social enterprises in Brunei, um, I think one of the reasons why we struggle is because our market in Brunei is too small. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of having this marketplace is to allow local social enterprises to have access to the global market and have social enterprises outside of Brunei have access to the Brunei spending power. So I wanted that one platform where it's all about buying with a purpose. Right. That's our tagline. And that was the idea that we took to Bali. Bali. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, yeah, describe to me the, the experience in Bali. Yeah, the, the Bali experience was very humbling. Um, of course, we were there to win the competition, obviously. It's a competition you want to win. Uh, we went there. Um, there were seven or eight other teams also competing from Australia, the Philippines, China. Um, and, you know, there were some really great ideas there. And I knew that I, would, I was in for a ride when I knew that two out of the three judges were 
experienced social entrepreneurs themselves. Right. So they've got experience, I don't, because I'm just starting out, right? Um, so with the team that we were in, we tried really hard to try and um, sell the story, right? But essentially, we didn't end up winning because um, marketplaces, I think, are typically difficult anyway to try and sell. But even then, there were, quite, there were some holes in our story, which fine, it's all a learning experience. So we missed our opportunity to win. But then, like I said, the other idea is amazing. So what do you learn there? I learned that it's important to really understand the problem that you're trying to solve with this uh, idea that you have. It's important to have a full understanding of who you're solving it for and why you're solving it. Mm -hmm. um, that. And a lot of the ideas that I heard were very much solving local problems. So it's very much close to heart. And in a way, I felt that perhaps as a team, we went we thought too big by thinking global. So now our strategy is to try and scale it back again and think about in a Brunei context, how can we make it work? And if a formula that works in Brunei, then it shouldn't be that difficult to sort of scale up slowly. Interesting. Yeah, because our, yeah, our aim is really Borneo. For me, it's, to me, Borneo is such a magical place. And I feel like it's a marketplace with Brunei, but essentially it's, it's going to represent Borneo. And two weeks ago, I spoke to a lady who's based in Miri. She's also a social entrepreneur. And we shared, she shared with me her challenges and you know, what drives her to continue being a social entrepreneur. And we both shared our appreciation for the, Bor the beauty of Borneo and how much uh, potential it holds. What, what is the size of social entrepreneurs in Brunei? When we did our research, we maybe came across 10, uh -huh. 10 that could say that they were a social enterprise. There might be other businesses out there that are social enterprises, but don't they market don't themselves as it. It's because I think the awareness of what it is is not there. So one of our goals as we act is also to grow the awareness of what it means to be a purpose-driven business. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we feel that that's probably the angle that we should go for first. Rather than diving straight into a marketplace, we're going to be quite careful about how we're going to launch to that marketplace by telling stories first. So we're going to tell stories of social entrepreneurs within Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia, mm -hmm. uh, get people inspired. Mm -hmm. And then later, I think on our timeline, we said we would launch it next year, mm -hmm. probably in November, in line with the... Social Enterprise Day in the UK. So it's not just yourself running this idea? No. Um, so the Startup Weekend, you meet other individuals with different skill sets that you don't have. Mm -hmm. And you pull them together. Yeah. Interesting. Right. So you get to learn and you have to work with different personalities immediately, you know. And you're not knowing them. Not knowing them at all. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, we're still in it together, so that uh -huh. says something. Okay. Can you tell me about that experience? How, how many people in the group? Um, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five, including me, six. There's six of us all together. Driving this idea that was championed by yourself. Yeah. Wow. So it was nice to share the vision uh -huh. with... How, um, how do you convince these five other individuals to come on board? So the format of Startup Weekend is once you pitch, then you kind of stand at the back and then at the end of the, the pitch fire session then the other individuals that didn't pitch can stand by the idea that they want to work on. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I stood at the back and these five ladies were with me. Oh, women? Yes. The focus of that was a women's edition. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So five ladies came oh, and... Um, so we sat together and really focused the idea from my initial one to what it is now. Right. Very meaningful. Uh -huh. I'm just curious about, you know, you say you want to create a marketplace. So is it product-based if I am a social, social enterprise without any product but services? Can I still use it? Yeah, so it'll be products and services. We're trying to call it experience. Um, there are a lot of travel companies now that are also social enterprises themselves um, that create experiences for tourists uh, to see certain parts of the community 
and then um, with the money that they get from you, it goes back towards that community. Right. So okay. there is that market. Yeah, it's um, sustainable traveling, as they call it. Okay. So it'll be yeah, it'll be things and experiences.